Hello, thank you for joining this webinar. I'm Stéphane Bonnet from Thales Corporate Engineering. Functional chains are an essential concept of Arcadia, and the way they are implemented in Capella is very unique. In many projects in Thales, functional chains are emerging as reference artifacts, federating all engineer stakeholders, that means not only system engineers or architects, but managers, design authorities, VNV practitioners, safety specialists, and so on. With the evolutions we just released in June with Capella 1.3.1, we thought it would be a great moment to dedicate a webinar to this topic. I will first come back on what is a functional chain. What is the definition? How does it compare to scenarios? How does it relate to capabilities, to functions, and so on? Then I will focus on what is specific in Capella 1.3.1. We introduced new ways to assemble functional chains and new way to express sequence and control in functional chains. And I'm going to uh, go through these evolutions. Finally, I'm going to spend some time explaining how we can exploit functional chains in our engineering activities. So let's start with what are functional chains? If we read the definition that Jean-Luc Voirin gave in his, uh, his book on Arcadia, um, we see that a functional chain is an ordered set of references towards functions and functional exchanges. Functional chains are used to describe the system behavior in particular usage contexts to describe one or more system capabilities. It is actually pretty difficult to explain these concepts without examples. What is a capability? What is a function? What is a functional chain? So I'm going to do my best here. And using examples, I'm going to try and explain all this. Let's start first with major Arcadia concepts. It all starts with capabilities. Capabilities are high level services or ability of the system. They are described by functional chains and scenarios. Functional chains and scenarios involve functions that are connected to each other using functional exchanges. Functional exchanges represent the, the dependencies between functions. Functions and functional exchanges are allocated to structural elements, actors, components, component exchanges. Functional exchanges and component exchanges can be further described using data structures and so on. We call that interfaces. Structural elements can have mode or state machines defining which functions are available or not available in, which mo in that mode or in that state. So these core concepts of Arcadia are pretty easy to grasp. With all this, you can describe pretty precisely the need and the solution. To better illustrate these concepts, the system I'm going to use as an example is a multi-mission drone-based product. We can use a drone to monitor agricultural fields, for example. We can use a drone to perform aircraft exterior inspection. I will play with two different models. One is extremely simple and the other one is slightly richer, but both of them represent this, uh, this product. The drone has several capabilities. It is able to fly automatically following a flight plan. It is able to be manually controlled. And the main purpose of, of this drone-based system is to capture data, images, scans, and so on. The drone has a ground terminal uh, made of a joystick and a tablet. And it is sending the collected data from the flying object to the ground, to the tablet. Data can be visualized in life or after the flight is completed. This is what this capability is about. Visualize data in life during flight. And visualizing data is actually uh, several kinds of, of data. Display acquired image video, display, display multispectral image, thermal image, and so on. This capability that is illustrated by several functional chain involve or exploit a set of functions. Here on the scheme, the first functional chain display acquired HD video in life is highlighted in blue in the diagram. 
and the other functional chain display terminal image in life uh, is highlighted in red in the diagram. How this is um, displayed in uh, Capella. So here it is. We have a set of functions that are connected to each other and using the standard insert and remove tools of Capella, we're able to select which functional chain we want to visualize. Here, I'm interested in visualizing the uh, uh, archive collected mission data, and I will have it here displayed in blue. The other one that I'm going to display is trigger or manually manually trigger uh, image acquisition, this one. And we can see here that the um, other that other functional exchanges are highlighted in red this time. When a functional exchange or a function is displayed in, in black, it means it is involved in several functional chains. And if I was continuing to display other functional chains on this particular diagram, then uh, the tool would automatically select other colors. Uh, before doing a quick overview of how functional chains are implemented in Capella, quick view of the conceptual description provided by, by Arcadia. And what we can see on, on this data model is that a system capability is described by functional chains and scenarios referencing functions and functional exchanges, meaning that functional chains and scenarios are pretty close uh, conceptually. How is that implemented in Capella? This is a sequence diagram. On the top, we have the data flow, meaning all the functions and the connections. And the sequence diagram represents one example of orchestration between these functions and these functional exchanges. Scenarios are made of lifelines and sequence messages. Lifelines and sequence messages have references towards element of the data flow. If in the sequence diagram I delete the sequence message, I am not going to delete functional exchange 12. Functional chains work exactly the same way. A functional chain is described by a series of involvements uh, that reference functions and functional exchanges. So now we, we understand that uh, scenarios and functional chains contain their own uh, elements. That means that each reference to a function or a functional chain inside a chain or a scenario can be further qualified. For example, we can select which exchange items are actually flowing on the sequence message, these exchange items being a subset of what is defined on the uh, functional exchange. We have, on both of them, we have exchange contexts uh, that can hold uh, a linked text expression, allowing to, for example, specify values. We can also allocate requirements to these involvements and sequence messages and so on. So we're going to go back in the tool uh, to display some of the capabilities. And we're going to start by illustrating how we can um, display functional chains automatically in architecture diagrams. So the first thing I'm going to do is open my uh, template diagram and create a new architecture diagram that I'm going to set contextual to uh, archive collected mission data. Okay, I'm going to unsynchronize this diagram and refresh the diagram. Here, automatically, all the elements contributing to the functional chain are actually displayed on this diagram. And this diagram will always reflect the latest state on, of the uh, functional chain. Because the layout is not that, uh, that great, I'm going to use my template diagram, copy the layout, come back on my architecture diagram, and pass the layout and maybe optimize the, the connections. So now I'm going to illustrate how we can create, uh, easily create a functional chain. And for that, I'm going to use a, a simpler model than this one. 
So still about the drone. And this time I'm going to select a data flow diagram, motion and orientation, and I'm going to create a new functional chain. This functional chain is going to be, for example, these two functional exchanges. I right click, create functional chain and call it uh, autonomous piloting. So this um, selection of functional exchanges and creation of functional chain is a kind of shortcut. Sometimes functional chains might be more complicated uh, or more complex to, uh, to draw. And for that, we need a dedicated edition diagram that shows all the involvements of the functions and functional exchanges in this particular functional chain. On the palette of this diagram, I'm able to display or to involve new functions or new functional exchanges based on what exists in the current data flow. So we have process flight plan. I want to add the fact that process flight plan receives motion limits in order to implement obstacle avoidance. So I can start by invol involving one specific function. So the compute safe motion limits and between compute motion limits and implement process flight plan I have an existing functional exchange which is here and I could continue by saying okay the, the next one is detect obstacle so instead of inserting one by one the references toward the functions and toward the exchanges we can insert them all at once so I can select exchange and function, select my target function. And here I'm interested in receiving the obstacle data from the detect obstacle function. And I can continue from detect obstacle. And here I have the uh, obstacle itself. So now if I check the result of my data flow diagram, we can see that we have uh, the several additional exchanges that are highlighted. Capella also provides a, a way to uh, initiate a scenario based on a functional chain. So if I select this functional chain, do right click, transition, functional chain to functional scenario initialization, it will just analyze the content of the functional chain and create our sequence diagram representing it. So it has been created here, automated piloting, and create the diagram that will allow me to visualize this scenario. Okay, so now I would be able to enrich the scenario. Okay, so that was the, uh, the a set of, of demos explaining how functional chains are managed in, in Capella. So now I'm going to switch on what, what is new in Capella 1.3.1. The first thing that we have introduced is the uh, assembly of functional chains. Here is what Arcadia says about assembly. Um, on the top left part of this uh, slide, I have the complete data flow, meaning I have six functions that are connected with each other. And right beside, I have three functional chains, three atomic functional chains. F1 is connected to F2 and F3. FC2, functional chain two, is actually made of F4 and F5. Functional chain 3 is actually made of F4 and F6. Arcadia says that we can assemble these functional chains by two ways. The first one is by compatible exchanges. So if I take functional chain 1 and functional chain 2, I can connect them by connecting the output port of F2 to the input port of F4. And the result of the expanded functional chain is the one we see in the last column. We have five functions that work together. The other way to assemble functional chains is when they have a common function. So here, I want to assemble functional chain two and functional chain three. They have one common function, which is F4. And what I'm doing when I connect them is I say that they are connected by the same execution of the uh, F4 function. None of these schemes were supported by Capella uh, before the version 1.3.1. .1. 
were able to connect two functional chains by compatible exchange, but only if we were connecting the last function of a functional chain and the first function of the second one. So I am going to illustrate all this in the tool. Uh, I'm going to open the same small example and the same data flow diagram about um, computing the drone motion. So data flow diagram here, control drone motion and orientation. I'm going to create a first functional chain here, same as we had previously. Functional chain that I called autonomous piloting. And a second functional chain, which is stackable avoidance. Right click, functional chain, create functional chain, and I call it obstacle avoidance. What I'm going to do now is to create a, an additional functional chain on top of these two ones, which is going to be automated piloting with obstacle avoidance. And when I do that, I'm going to create a dedicated functional chain description diagram. And instead of referencing directly functions or functional exchanges, I am able to reference other functional chains. Here, I'm going to insert two references toward these two functional chains. I have this result here. And the way that I'm going to connect them is by saying that the process flight plan of obstacle avoidance is actually the same thing as the process flight plan of autonomous piloting. So when I join these two, I've actually created a a higher level functional chain connected the two and we can display it on the uh, on the data flow diagram by doing I'm going to remove these two ones and display the composite functional chain and this time we don't even see anymore that it is made of two different sub chains it is just displayed as one in the functional chain description diagram we can choose between a an expanded representation, the one we have here, or a folded one that is pretty convenient when functional chains get really complex. We don't necessarily want to see all the detail of all the subchains. So that was for the um, assembly of functional chains. The second big evolution that we've brought is uh, sequence and controls. We said previously that scenarios and functional chains are conceptually close. Scenarios add a chronological dimension compared to functional chains. Scenarios focus on the temporal positioning of functions and exchanges. Note that the ordering that we can find in, in a given sequence diagram can be different from the one in another sequence diagram. So the, the order is really local to the sequence diagram. On the side of functional chains, before Kepler 1.3.1, we were only able to express a set of functions and their dependencies. We didn't have any concept of control or order. And if we back on the scenario, we also have combined fragments allowing to express alternatives, parallels, and so on. And these are all constructs that were not available with functional chains. The biggest added value of functional chains was that there were pretty simple, and, and this is the reason why systems engineers have really uh, started to use them intensively. But in the same time, they, they were lacking some expressivity. So our challenge has been to uh, find balance between giving them more expressivity, but, but not making them too complex. So what we can do now with version 1.3.1 is actually the same thing that we had in the previous sequence diagram. We have a loop or an iteration, meaning that this is always uh, repeated. It starts with positioning the drone camera, goes to acquire visuals on the aircraft, uh, receive the light. So between position drone camera and acquire visuals on the aircraft, we have uh, a sequence link that express precedence. We don't have that between reflex light and acquire visuals. And then a bit later, we have an OR control node that has two branches, 
either a defect is detected and in that case we go in this branch or no defect is detected and in that case we'll just continue iterating. So this is now pretty close to what we had in, uh, in the previous uh, sequence diagram. So the concepts that we have introduced, uh, I'm going to, to describe them. The first one is sequence link. Sequence link expresses um, a precedence between two functions. Here, having f1 and f2 connected means that f1 starts before f2 does, that f1 and f2 are not necessarily connected by a function exchange, and that the end of the execution of f1 does not necessarily triggers the execution of f2. Sequence link don't have a semantics of triggering. Sequence links can be associated to functional exchanges, meaning that not only there is precedence between these two functions, but there's also a dependence of, of data. Here, uh, f1 starts before f2, but f2 also requires f12 from f1. We can play with the uh, display in order to make the, the diagram lighter. I will show that a bit later. Second concept we have introduced is the uh, end, the end construct. F2 and F3 here can start after F1 does. F4 can start after F2 and F3 do. And before starting, F2 needs F12 from F1. So it's pretty simple. It's very similar with the uh, OR construct. Here it means either F2 either F3 is executed according to the condition attached to their respective sequence links, connecting them to the uh, OR control node. F4 can start after F2 or F3 does. Before starting, F2 needs F12 from F1 because of the data flow between the two. And the last one is the iteration. Uh, iteration is equivalent to a loop. The sequence F2 and F4 is repeated if the condition to exit the iteration is not verified. So here, if the test is failed, we go back to F2. If the test is passed, we move up to F5. So I'm just going to illustrate quickly how the um, where to find these constructs in the in Capella. Um, I'm going to create again a few very basic functions. Here we are. We have our four function involvements, or three, sorry. And in the palette, we, we've tried to keep things pretty simple. The, the first section of the palette is the uh, legacy tools, like uh, what we had until Capella 1.3.1, just allowing to reference functions and functional exchanges. And the sequencing and control artifacts are in the second section of the palette and here we can see that we can create uh, an end control node um, or control node or switch them if, if we think we made a, a mistake in ffbds we usually uh, the constructs are usually when you have a hand uh, there's a beginning one and a target one so we we are able to automatically create uh, these constructs. So for example, and here is like this. I can insert any function, for example, and say that after this function, we'll go to an end where other functions will be, uh, will be so, for example, we can insert a function of, on one given sequence link that will split the link in two and we are building the functional chain. At this point, we only have functional dependencies, so functional exchanges. I'm trying to make it pretty. We can add the information that there's also precedence between system function 2 and system function 4. So I can uh, create a sequence link between these two functions and 
specify that this sequence link is actually related to this data flow. So by default, Capella doesn't display this relationship between the sequence link and the data flow. Um, we can play with filters in order to show them. So for example, I can remove that and we can see the little thing here. But what we want to do most of the time is to hide that and even merge the functional exchanges involvement and the sequence links in order to gain space on the, on the diagram and clarity. So if I see something like this here with a full line, it's a data flow. If I see something that is with a dash, uh, with a name, it is actually both the sequence link and the uh, functional exchange. I'm not going to describe all of them. You get the idea. I let you play with, uh, with this new tool. A few warnings. Sequence links defined within a functional chain are local to the functional chain context. Um, it's not because in one functional chain I said that A is executed before B that it will always be the case. Much like the order of sequence messages in the sequence diagram is local to the sequence diagram, it's the same here with functional chains. The original intent is to enhance the descriptions to, to provide better expressivity we did not uh, have in mind to provide the means to perform model execution. I said it previously, but a sequence link does not carry a triggering semantics. It only expresses precedence relationships. The precise semantics of all these uh, constructs, it's not completely defined because we, we lack uh, operational feedback on these constructs. In the future, we might precise uh, the semantics. Last but not least, if ever you see a sequence link between two functions that are located to two different components and there's no associated functional exchange to support the sequence link, then this should be questioned. Uh, there's no way to ensure that a function in component A will be executed before another function in component B if there's no communication between A and B supporting this requirement. So we reach a third part of this uh, webinar, probably the most interesting one, about exploiting functional chains. The first exploitation that we have is within one given model. We can use them to ensure the need and solution completeness and consistency. Working on a functional chain helps make sure the definition of functions and functional exchanges is sufficient and adapt it to describe what is expected. This exercise typically leads to creating new exchanges, modifying functions, uh, adding functions, and so on, in order to be able to write the, the story that the functional chain is supposed to capture. The correspondence of functional chains across Arcadia perspectives is a key asset for checking completeness and consistency. Functional chains are the contracts binding the different perspectives. This is another case where a, a quick demo will, will, um, will be worth a thousand words. And we're going to see what we had in the system need analysis a diagram here, in which I have a functional chain, very simple, which is uh, remotely take a picture. This functional chain cannot be uh, simpler than that. I'm going to perform a transition of this functional chain toward the uh, logical architecture. So I select the functional chain, transition, functional transition. I select the functional chain here, accept the differences. And now my functional chain is present in the logical architecture. I'm going to display a logical architecture diagram, logical system here. So we can see on this um, diagram that we already have a functional chain which is the uh, automated flight plan. But I'm now going to display the functional chain remotely take a picture, the one that I received from system need analysis. And now we can see that this functional chain is invalid. Uh, and, and when we look at it on, on the diagram, it's, it's true. We, we are, something is missing. There's something that doesn't flow completely. And this is normal because in the logical architecture of this model, 
we have actually introduced the ground station, which is something in between the drone and the operator. And we have introduced functions to acquire commands. So basically, we have refined the, this functional chain, and we have refined these functional exchanges and function. And this functional chain needs to be corrected in order to, uh, to be valid. It's what I'm going to do using a functional chain description diagram. And typically, what I would do here is try and analyze what, what is wrong with this um, functional chain. Here, the thing that is not correct is this link between the operator and the uh, acquired visual aircraft, which is actually a camera on the, uh, on the drone. So we need something in between. So I'm, I'm removing this involvement here and I'm creating another one from detect defect that includes picture request. I'm going to connect acquire command to acquire visual aircraft. And in my model, I have different options. And what I'm interested in, in the context of this functional chain is a picture request. So now I have reworked my functional chain. And when I'm in my architecture diagram, my functional chain is now valid. So if I have two or 300 functional chains describing my whole product or my whole system as the system needs analysis, I am supposed to have the exact same number of corresponding functional chains in my logical architecture and my physical architecture. And I am supposed to make sure they are all valid. And if they are all valid, I can be pretty confident that I didn't forget any function or any functional exchange. So functional chains are really a, a wonderful tool to uh, strengthen the consistency of our architecture. Next, I'm moving to another topic, which is the support of incremental development. When, when we picture a product, uh, a finalized product or, or a finalized system, it is made of a certain amount of capabilities. Each of these capabilities are illustrated by functional chains. What we do when we have an incremental approach, uh, we can call it uh, agile, scaled agile, or, or whatever, is we're going to define increments. And the increments are going to be described with expected functional chains. You can almost compare these functional chains as uh, user stories. So here on, on this capability, I will have two functional chains in my first increment, three in the second one. In my first increment, that can last six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever the length of the, of the sprint, we're going to perform vertical slices of architectural design across need and solution models, meaning across system needs analysis, logical architecture, physical architecture. I'm going to create the system functions that I need. I'm going to create the logical and physical functions that I need. And I'm going to rework that during all my sprint in order to be able to deliver at the end of the sprint a complete data package that, that uh, contains all what is necessary in terms of functions, interfaces, components, state, modes, and, and so on for this increment. Then the subsystems will take that data package as an input and start their own refine refinement work. The people from the VNV will take this data package and start writing the test procedures against these functional chains. And the system team will start working on the uh, second increment, and so on, and so on. In Thales, we have a dedicated add-on that helps us uh, manage these increments. It's not something that is open source. We are open to uh, discuss with anyone who would be interested. We are trying to think about ways of how we could uh, share this, this tooling or how we could keep on uh, developing it commercially or with any other kind of, of partnership. I'm going to open a new version of my model again. And here in this model, I have defined several versions. So I'm using, I, I have actually uh, sprint one and sprint two. I already did specify their, their content. Sprint one is uh, defect detection and manual piloting. And Sprint 2 will add the automated uh, flight plan. To define the content of a version, we just need to drag and drop the functional chains from the Project Explorer to, to this uh, box here. If I display 
a logical architecture diagram, we can see here there's three functional chains. I can activate a dedicated layer on this diagram that will allow me to select which version I want to see. So I want to see the uh, footprint uh, of Sprint 1, meaning what are the functions and components that are necessary in Sprint 1. And here, all the functions that are highlighted in purple are actually necessary to be able to deliver what, what is expected from the functional chain that, is, that defines the Sprint 1. And this is what the development teams or subsystem teams and so on will have to design and develop first. I can display a second version, so I, I can display the now Sprint 2. I think I did. Okay, I want to display both Sprint 1 and Sprint 2. And here, the functions that are in gray are actually common to the, uh, to the two increments. And the one that is in cyan is specific to the second uh, sprint. And, and in that case, what is specific to the second sprint is the uh, autom implementation of the automated flight plan here. So this is a, a nice help to manage iterative development of the, of the system. Another way to exploit functional chains is to relate these uh, functional chains to test procedures. We, we can use the functional chains as an inspiration to write the test procedures and, and then derive link the test procedures to uh, textual requirements to, using derived links. This has been done on, on a few projects in, uh, in Thales and this is now our uh, standard recommendation. So the functional chains are used as an inspiration, as stories against which the test procedures are written. Each step in the, step in the test procedure corresponds to a functional exchange or a function or a step in the functional chain. And, and, and then there's some linking with requirements as well. These slides come from the ATL2 modernization project in Thales, who first implemented this, uh, this process. Once we map our test procedures on, on these functional chains and so on, we can enhance or improve the, the progress monitoring. Because all of the stakeholders, like people from VNV, people from the design team and so on, are working with the functional chains as a reference artifact. We are able to extract metrics on the maturity of each functional chain on the um, amount of functional chains that are considered finalized uh, compared to uh, what was expected and so on. And using functional chains, we can also improve problem analysis. So if the test procedures have been written against functional chains, when we, when on the test bench, we run into a problem, it is pretty easy to locate in the functional chain where is the problem happening. On this functional exchange, for example, here, we have data and interfaces. We, we conduct an impact analysis. We analyze the model, the requirements, and here we have several options. Either the model was wrong and there's a specification defect that will later lead to a component evolution. Either the model was right, but the implementation was wrong, and in that case, that leads to a component defect. And on the ATL2 modernization project, this is the first time that people on the test benches, when they were running into a problem, wouldn't go see the code, but would go see the model. Finally, we can use functional chains to express non-functional expectations. Uh, I don't have many examples here and I'm running out of time. But the idea is that we can, for example, express latency between the beginning and the end of a functional chain. We can associate failed events when we do safety analyses, capture fault trees. Uh, we've seen examples where safety design rules were 
based on functional chains. So for example, if I had a hazard of a certain criticality, I would need to have one or two or three functional chains covering this hazard uh, using uh, different components and so on. We can um, use functional chains to express the functional expectations that we have for the system in a certain context. Uh, if you've seen my previous webinar about uh, modes and states, you will know what I'm talking about. Basically, the uh, combination of modes and states in our system is exponential and it is really difficult to predict what will be available or not in one specific context. And we can use functional chains to at least specify what we expect in one context or in another one. But I invite you to uh, uh, watch again my webinar on modes and states if you're really interested in this uh, topic. So I'm uh, reaching the end of this uh, webinar. As always, the resources, you, we have the public forums, we have the um, YouTube channel, and the Capella website and the whole community that is here to uh, answer your questions. Uh, and now we're going to move to the uh, Q&A session. Thank you.